and welcome back to my channel. I've always got to arrange my stuff. If you're new here, my name is Rusty, and this is me channel where I talk about me favorite movies, mostly horror, and me favorite music, mostly metal, and I'm in my Halloween socks that the lovely Miss Carter sent to, to me for Halloween. And um, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite movies in a long, long time. Um, it's not perfect. Didn't get a perfect score because I save those for very, very rare movies. I'm really, really stingy with the 10 out of 10. But I do do a lot of nine and a halfs. And those are all personal. It's just personal. Something I wanted but didn't want, didn't get. Something I wanted to see but didn't, you know. Just some personal thing. But still, to me, a 9 to a 10 is a 10. So, And that is the black phone. Yes, the black phone. This is so new, it cost me a penny too, let me tell you. DVD, Blu-ray, digital combo. Ethan Hawke, the black phone. So the Black Phone was released in, I think, June. Of the end of June, I think, 2022. And uh, it was directed by Scott Derrickson, written by Joe Hill from his short story, and then screenplayed by Scott Derrickson and Robert Cargill. These are some people from Bloom House. It stars Mason Times, Madeline McGraw, and Ethan Hawke, and yes. So this movie opens. It's set in 1978. And it opens with our main star, Finney, uh, playing baseball. And um, he faces off against uh, this kid named Bruce. And shortly thereafter, we see Bruce riding down a road where uh, we see a black van turn onto the road and it fades away. Um, we are introduced to his sister, Gwen, who um, has some kind of psychic ability, and we are introduced to his alcoholic father, who is Terrence and really touchy about that little psychic problem, or that psychic gift. Um, We learn kind of later that her mother was also a psychic. Um, sort of clairvoyant is her particular brand of psychic. And uh, we see Robert, who is uh, like the school righteous fighter. He's a protector, like the school protector. Uh, Robin, and he's always protecting Finney, who is very bullied quite often, especially by Buzz Matt Maddie. <clears throat> if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about, the, the two little assholes and the redhead. Um, we then see Gwen being interviewed by the police at school, and she is questioned about these kidnappings we're learning about. We're learning that these children are missing. Um, all of them are young boys in the 12, 13, 14, 15 age range. So we see the police talking to her about her friend reporting that she had been having dreams and that, you know, it wasn't very nice to be saying that kind of stuff, saying that, you know, the brother, um, Bruce, was, you know, they would never be getting him like they wanted to get him. So we then see her get in a lot of trouble about that which is a very, very powerful scene where she's getting spanked very hard with a belt for 
and the, the little girl who plays Gwen is just excellent. But, you know, she's getting spanked extremely hard um, and being made to scream that, you know, her dreams are just dreams. Because her, her dad obviously has some kind of serious issue with this gift and anyone knowing about it. And we find out why later. And it's kind of understandable when you find out later, not the abuse, but his alcoholism and his issue with this gift. We kind of find out some stuff about it later that explains it a little bit. But um, we see um, Robin protecting him from these three bullies that are after Finney all the time. Uh, we then see Robin get grabbed. And um, Finn is told about Robin being grabbed. The cops question Gwen again. Uh, but this time they have sort of, you know, how even police forces, um, and that's true in the United States. I don't know about other countries. Um, England a little bit. But in, in the States, cops can get desperate, and they will turn to psychics and stuff like that. So we do see this police department turn to Gwen again. Um, can you help us? You know, that's how desperate they are. Um, we see um, the dynamics between Gwen and Finn. They, they're, they have a wonderful sibling bond, and she's actually... Her constitution is stronger than his. Um, we get to see her clock one of those bullies and rescue Finney from them. Of course, they end up then both of them getting kicked around. But the point is, though, she fought when he wouldn't. So um, it was shortly after that that we get to see Finn himself get grabbed. And this is when we are really introduced to Ethan Hawke's character, the Grabber. We end up knowing his brother's name is Max, but do they ever say his name? I don't recall them ever saying his name. Um, but we meet the Grabber, and that is some of the most intense scenes down in that basement. Ethan Hawke was just phenomenal. I am going to do a side note here. Um, I watched all the extras, and, uh, you know, Ethan... You're never going to see this. But if I could say something to you, Ethan, Ethan, um, you're 51, 52, and he looks great in this movie. You know, they even show him, like, sitting in that chair waiting, you know. Um, so if you've ever seen this movie, he's still got quite a bod. But in the extras and the interviews, what the fuck is wrong with you, Ethan? Dude, you look fucking 65 years old, okay? You're only 50, 51. You were 51 when you made this movie and you did these interviews. And in the movie, you look fine. But, like, you look terrible, dude. I mean, I hate to say it, but you look like you're 67 years old. I mean, I don't know what's up with that. I just thought I would mention it because I was quite shocked. Because I'm not saying he looks like sickly, like there's something wrong with him. I'm saying he looks like he aged really bad. And the interviews in this thing, he looks every bit 67, 66, 67. Hollywood years. <laughs> um, you know, Tom Cruise is like 59. You know what I'm saying? So... And Tom Cruise looks about 20 years younger than Ethan Hawke does in this interview. And Ethan Hawke is only 51 in this interview. Just turned 51, he said, in this interview. Uh, that's in the extras. And it's like, damn, Ethan, are you allergic to moisturizer or what? He looked terrible. That's all I got to say. I'm just, and, and Ethan Hawke is an attractive guy. And it's like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? You are only 52 now. He should be about 52 right now, um, or close to it. Dude, you look 67 years old. Go fucking buy some Olive Olay or some shit, man. That's just, 
There is no excuse to be as rich as you are and look that old when you are only 52. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it a little bit. Let's come back to it. I just had to say it. I couldn't help it. <laughs> so um, we have Finney now down in the basement. And we're introduced to this creepy character of that Ethan Hawke should win a damn he should win every horror award out there for the portrayal of the grabber. But um, where we see the phone, the black phone that doesn't work, supposedly. And yet it starts ringing and Finn starts, you know, getting um, phone calls on this black phone that is not even connected. And um, he can hear, the grabber can hear the phone ring. But he believes, or he states in the film, that he believes that it's static electricity because it's not even hooked up. The wire's cut, right? So um, he starts getting phone calls, Finney does, at, at different scenes. And the first one that he gets is from one of the victims, uh, Billy. No, no, Bruce. The one from the baseball. Bruce is the first one that calls him and tells him about the spot in the floor between the bathroom and the room that he's in that he was going to try to dig out, but he didn't have time because he probably made another mistake that got him caught. Um, so Bruce tells him about the floor and Gwen dreams about Bruce almost as though she's connected to Finn in that when he, right, when he dreams or when he gets a phone call from one of those boys, she ends up dreaming about that boy and some scene about that boy. So that's kind of interesting. But she dreams about Bruce when Bruce calls and talks to Finn. So it's interesting to try to figure out how all this is connected uh, psychically, in my opinion. But, um, and she ends up like riding around in the middle of the night on her bike, like looking for something familiar from the dream. You know, it's so, like I, I see a house, but I don't know where that house is at. So that's kind of what she does. Now, um, B uh, Billy is the next one that calls um, and talks to him. And he's the one that warns him because there is a scene in which he leaves the door unlocked to the basement and Finn is going to try to escape. And right when he starts to do that, the phone rings. He goes and answers the phone and it's a Billy um, who is a newspaper boy that got taken and killed. So he tells him not to go up there, that that door was left open on purpose. And that's where we see um, the grabber sitting in a chair with no shirt on, waiting for them to come up there. And he tells him that that's part of the game, that for some reason the grabber, he can't, he's got to have an excuse. A lot of sociopaths are like that. They have to have an excuse. And I'm not just talking about murder. I'm talking about sociopaths. They have to have an excuse. They like to have an excuse. Because you see, a sociopath doesn't want to think they're doing something wrong. So if the sociopath is using you, abusing you, uh, cheating you, stealing from you, doing whatever it is that they're doing, they need you to give them a reason. So they will do something to give you, to get you to give them a reason to hit you. Give them a reason to, you know, they're through with you now. They've stole all your money. They've done whatever. So, you know, they've used you for whatever they want you. If you could put it like into a friendship, family, or lover situation, that friend came and, and hooked on to you. And, and like got whatever they wanted out of you, support, money, um, friendship. Uh, and then when, when, when they were through with you, they don't want to be the asshole. They're not going to come and harm you, you know. 
and start a fight. What they're going to do is make you start a fight with them. They want you to be the reason. And that's what the grabber is like. The, you know, Billy told him, look, you have to be the naughty boy. He can't hurt you unless you be a naughty boy. As long as you're good and don't play the game, he can't justify beating you to death and doing whatever else he does to them, you know. So that saved him at that moment. So um, he also tells him that he had a cord that he had hidden in the room. So he now knows about the cord, and then Gwen dreams about Billy, the paper boy, and when he was abducted. So Gwen ends up going to her dad, and they have this talk where we find out more about their, their mother. Um, their mother was like her. She did have this ability, but it drove her crazy, and it made her interfere and do things to the point where she ended up committing suicide. And you kind of then understand, you know what I mean? You kind of then understand why. Good God, there's no telling what all he went through. Um, I'm not saying any of that as an excuse. Um, because other than him being an asshole and a drunk, the only thing that we ever saw him do was spank the hell out of her when the cops were questioning her about her dreams that time. So it's not like we saw him engage in a whole bunch of child abuse or anything. Um, he was obviously very messed up by whatever he went through with his wife having this gift and then her committing suicide and leaving them all alone. So you kind of understood some more about that. And he even gave in, and he's driving around with Gwen after the dream about Billy, looking for Finn, looking for his son, looking, going on her tips, you know, like, sure, okay, finally, and, you know. So the next call that he gets is from Griffin, who tells him um, about the grabber's brother and not playing the naughty boy. You know, he tells him more about how the grabber works mentally that he needs to you to be naughty he leaves that door open for you to try to escape so that he can be waiting for you and be the naughty boy to be the naughty boy so that he can do all the things that he does to them so he then tells him though that the lock on the door is his bike lock and he gives them he gives them the combination no Billy wasn't the paper boy I've only seen it twice Griffin was the paper boy Billy was the friendless kid okay so Griffin tells him that the grabber has stole his bike lock and that he had wrote down the combination on the wall in the basement, but he wasn't sure of the order, you know. So he would have to try that. And then he tells him that Max has come around, his brother, the grabber's brother. And that because this has put a lot of stress on him, he's not sleeping well. And he's passed out upstairs in that chair. To try to sneak by him and get out. Which he does. And he does manage just to get out. Not knowing there's a big ass Satan dog. Up in that son of a bitch. That scares the shit out of you when it starts barking. And he manages to get out. And he almost gets away down the street. He almost. You know. Manages to get away. But the grabber gets him. And now it's pretty much. Game time. And he's mean when he wants to be. Well, of course he is. He's killed, what, he's a serial killer. He's killed, what, five that we know of for sure. And I'm sure that there were more, but... So, um, he tries to escape, gets caught, brought back. And then we get the phone call from Vince, who warns him. He's the, the long-haired blonde boy. I loved his hair. He was the long 
blonde haired kid who beat the hell out of that boy at the thing. He was what about sixteen, um, fifteen, sixteen. So he looked like he was probably the oldest one that the grabber had gotten, but he was also mean as fuck. So um, he warns Billy. I mean, he warns Finn that this is it. After what you did, this is it. You know, and he tells him about the whole, how what he did to get killed, which was go through the wall into the freezer, but he couldn't make it because he got caught. And that was the naughty boy that got him killed. And uh, so he tells Finn about that. And Gwen dreams, of course, now of uh, Vince. And she sees the actual house number, 7741. So Vince had told him about the freezer through the wall. And he does manage it to get through it and get into the freezer. But he can't get out, you know, freezers. Have you ever seen those stand-up freezers? They lock. And there's just no way. You could get someone to hear you, but that would have been the last thing he wanted. So he wasn't able to get out that way. And then, of course, the last phone call comes, and that's from the protector, Robin, his friend, um, who had protected him from the bullies all that time, who really tells him basically some really encouraging, loving things that he wants him to get free. And he wants him to get free for him so that he had not died for nothing, that he at least did something, um, that he died for his friend. So he tells him what he needs to do. You know, he's dug that hole, get things set up, bash him with that phone, fill it full of dirt, you have to fight, you have to fight for yourself. So, you know, this sends Gwen looking for the house again, because she's actually seen the the um, number of the house. She's seen the front of the house, she's seen the yard. So, Finn gets everything ready, and he packs the phone, uh, and gets ready for the fight, and she ends up finding the house from the dream, and at the same time, Max, we see Max again on Coke, that's the grabber's brother, and he goes downstairs into the basement, and find, he gets suspicious. And he goes down into the basement and he finds Finn. And, you know, it was kind of funny for a minute anyway. But it was funny, you know, because he's fucked up on cocaine. And he finds Finn and he's like, no way. You know, I knew he was hiding something, but I had no idea, you know. Um, and then all of a sudden, the grabber plants a big, lumberjack axe right in the middle of his head which you know didn't see that coming that was pretty graphic and um he does this in front of Finn and like I said like he had been warned after he tried to escape that night that was his last day it was it he had been the naughty boy it was time for him to go so he goes in there and starts doing that him and the grabber start fighting. He manages to trick him into falling in the hole, where he then starts beating him with the phone. He gets a hold of him, I think, one time, but he gets loose, and he starts winning the fight. He even, the phone starts ringing on the wall back there, and he puts the phone to the grabber's head. Um, to the ear where all of the boys are telling him, you know, they're laughing and saying that you're gone. At which point Finn kills him, strangles him to death, breaks his neck. So, unbeknownst to them, while this was going on, across the street, um, you know, we see the cops in the house. Just gave it away, but across the street, <laughs> 
uh, the cops are in the house and they're looking, but they, for a moment, think that this must be a bad lead because there's nothing there. It's empty. Then one of the cops finds a basement and they go down into the basement and that's where they find the graves of the boys that are missing. And one ready to be a grave dug, ready for another one. And uh, Gwen sitting outside, and then across the street, we see Finn come out the door finally. And she goes running to him. The cops go running to him. He says they're in the basement. It's all good. He's a hero now. Finn escapes. Yippee, 9.5 out of 10. That's the way it goes. (laughs) So... I think that the performances in this movie were absolutely flawless. I mean, we have had some really good horror movies in 2022, and The Black Phone is way up there. You know what I mean? Definitely, I'm not sure exactly where I would put it, because I'd have to really sit and think about it, but I know that it, this... The Black Phone and X, so far, The Black Phone and X would definitely be fisticuffs. They'd definitely be in fisticuffs for number one. I'm not sure if they've got any competition. You know, you have to sit down with the list of 2022 and what you've seen um, and judge, you know, but... The Black Phone and X would definitely be up there near number one. Um, And it takes some thinking to figure it out. But yes, Finn got away. He's the hero of the town. He killed the grabber. And the bullies won't go near him. Um, And it all ended fantastically. There's also a strange little short movie on this and i don't like short films you know the you know i guess they call them shorts you know like 15 minute movie i I can't stand shorts but it was there's weird from the guy who made the black phone i guess has got a short 15 minute movie on here called the prowler or something i can't remember what it was called but it was interesting but all it does is leave you going, what? I could have, you know, I could have lived without it. <laughs> I mean, but it would have made a cool movie. It would have made a cool movie. So, yeah, Black Phone, Ethan Hawk, 2022. And, yeah, Gwen, Finney, fantastic. Ethan Hawk. All three of them. The whole cast was fantastic. But those three were just... The work was just absolutely awesome. And um, that does it. Let me know what you think of the Black Phone. Does it sit near the top of your list? Because I know a lot of horror fans... Who know me. And I know them. And they are all like in love with this movie. So, yeah. So, I will see you in my next video. Love you, miss you, bye-bye. And always remember and never forget, you are a very wonderful and unique individual and don't let anyone ever tell you any different because that's a lie. A big, fat lie. But, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next thing that I managed to, that hits me to do. And, uh, Let me know what you think of the black phone. Later, Gator.